Hey everyone, I'm Greg with Spotted Tongue Woodworking, and I'm going to build something completely new to me. And when I say new to me, I mean aspects of it are new to me. I'm going to build a speaker. Whatever. So here's what we're going to do is tight bond quick and thick. What that's going to do is that is just going to dry super duper quick. Yes. And what I'm going to do with that is it's just going to help me hold it in place while I put it together. What I'm going to, what I'm doing is I'm just going to pin nail it together. Just like I was doing a work on a job site where glue pin nails, it's going to hold it together while the glue dries and it'll allow me to move to step to step to step without having to clamp every single thing. What the All of this to say is that it's fairly straightforward to put this uh, assembly together. Uh, the you know four sides, top, bottom, they all fit together, you know, rabbited, grooved, dadoed, whatever you want to call it. It is a very foolproof construction. Look at that. All right, so first problem is this is too wide for what's back there. So we're just going to have to trim off about a 16th off of one of the ends to get this to fit where the sides are still lined up nice and flush. So we'll move over to the miter saw. Yep, and that is the nice tight fit that I was hoping for. So that'll work out. So let's take this, we'll glue, 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 and we'll have that sit, and then we'll have to, yeah, first things first, let's get this glued up. I think the cordless pin nailer is truly one of my favorite things to have in the shop and on the site. It's so easy just to throw a few pins to hold whatever you're doing, and I love using it. Obviously, I can't put a pin nail through a circuit board, so we're going to use hot glue to hold these pieces in place inside the speaker. Right, so that should be it. Those should all be, those should all be set. So we're just going to let everything kind of, let the hot glue cool off, let the cool glue quick and thick, quickly thicken. And we'll move on to our next steps. And if you haven't guessed it by now, this is a woodworking YouTube channel. I am a woodworker, trim carpenter, whatever you want to call me. And electronics are absolutely 100% a weakness for me. I have never soldered anything. Uh, I can do some outlets. I change outlets. But never on a small scale like this. So big learning curve and just buying a soldering iron learning how to heat the flux and all that, do that and get those wires connected. But you got it, don't look to me for advice. It's just that you can do it. It's not pretty, but it'll work. And after that, those connections are made, we can put the top on, glued and pinned, just like the rest of the construction. The pin nails will glue very nicely, uh, not glue. They will, the, the holes will fill and it will paint nicely. So they go on to connect the speakers. Um, if you are following this for any sort of instructions, the black and red wires go to the woofers and the black and blue wires go to the tweeters. Some audio knowledge that I've picked up. And again, the parts fit very nicely, very, very snug, very tight fit. They snap right into place. So once you put them in there, you'll make sure everything's lined up because you're going to have a heck of a time trying to get them back out. So when I say lined up, I means if you are any somewhat sort of anal retentive about having your screws line up, either long ways or crossways or whichever ways, make sure you get it right before you set them in place. Also, don't forget to put the uh, little neoprene seal in there. Having an airtight container does help with the quality of the sound, and I forgot to slip that on there before I hooked up the wires. That won't be the first time. But 
from there, we'll get everything set into place. And because this is MDF, you know, it's not fantastic, but we're going to pre-drill with a self-centering drill bit. And after pre-drilling it, we're going to use coarse thread wood screws to hold the tweeters and the woofers, all these speaker parts, in place. Just a word to the wise, uh, the tweeters for this kit, uh, the tweeters are countersunk, but the woofers are not countersunk. So when you're driving those screws home, be careful not to overdrive them or you will bend the enclosure for the woofer. With the tweeters and the woofers installed, we're going to move on to the back side of this and we're going to put in these are ports. This is a ported speaker. What that means is that there is a hole in the back. <laughs> it's a lot more complicated than that, but the hole in the back all actually helps the speaker from, I think, from exploding um, with air pressure and it allows a better quality of sound. And like I said, not that long ago, the electronic part of this really did freak me out. Um, the soldering was probably the part I was most worried about. Uh, secondarily, I was worried about putting this whole control panel together. Um, I'll, I'll be very honest, I spent a lot of time watching the video on the DIY audio guy. He actually has two videos uh, for the construction of this speaker kit, uh, one for the body and one for specifically for this control center that goes in the back that has the uh, the control panel, the batteries, and the circuit board in the middle. Reading all the reviews and trying to pick which speaker kit I wanted to try out, this one stood out because all the soldering was done just to hook up the tweeters and the woofers. Everything else is just plug and play. <clears throat> it's just figuring out where everything plugs into. Again, a huge shout out to the DIY audio guy. Um, the only problem being that they have an updated circuit board that is slightly different than the one he uses. But if you just follow the general idea, it's very easy to follow along. It was actually easier to find his instructions and his videos than it was to find the instructions for this control panel on the Parts Express website. But the basic gist of putting it together is that all the lights and buttons go into this black panel that will be on the back side. All those buttons and lights hook some to somewhere on the circuit board that hooks that's going to be in the middle, supported on those uh, support posts. And on the back side of that control panel is going to be a battery pack because this is a wireless, cordless, uh, battery powered DIY Bluetooth speaker kit or whatever you want to call it. It actually it goes together in a really nice package and it's a super super tight fit into the back of that enclosure. Here I am just making sure that the lights go on. Um, I did mix up my blue and green light or the blue and red light. I forget which ones those are but I mixed those up. I had those in the wrong spot so they weren't turning on but I got those fixed, got it hooked up and did try it out and I got it right. It worked. I was blown away and then I was left with a brown box. It works so that I was not expecting it to work. I'll be very honest. I expected it to be a lot more difficult than it actually was. So now we're at the point where I'm stuck with this ugly brown box. And I think to myself, we can do better. And part of what I really would like to do is to have it on its side and have it kicked back. I want to put some legs on there. And I want to put a faceplate on there. And this is where the woodworking comes in. And actually, before we get to the fun woodworking part, we're going to be going into more of the cabinet finishing part that I have made a strong part of my business of pro producing a professional grade finished cabinets. And that is right up my alley. I'm super comfortable with this step. So we're just going to take everything out, take the speakers out, take the, the tweeters and the woofers and the back panel, take that out, disconnect everything. And close up all of the enclosures. We're going to use some painter's tape, cut around that so it's a nice tight 
fit and that way we will have full access to all sides of this box. As I was thinking about the design of the box and what I was thinking about what I was trying to do, I did realize that the idea of having a speaker upright like that that's going to be in a workshop, it would it would get knocked over. It would get knocked over. It would get broken. There's a reason why job site speakers are and why this model is short and squat. Center of gravity so that it doesn't get knocked over. All right, cool. So first step is with this MDF box is, you know, some, you have exposed grain and some of the corners didn't line up perfectly. So we're going to hit that with the red Bondo glazing putty, which is a personal favorite of mine for before paint, between coats of paint just for filling in any small imperfections. We're gonna put that on there, we're gonna sand that off, try to seal that end grain, and we're gonna hit it with primer. I will be using uh, products from Sherwin-Williams. So Sherwin-Williams Chem Aqua Plus Surfacer, which is probably the best primer I have ever used. Uh, spray to dry, to sand, to recoat in about 45 minutes. And we're, we're, you know, because this is M raw MDF, we're gonna to have to seal it. So several coats of primer. In between coats of primer, we're going to keep using that red Bondo glazing putty, trying to fill in imperfections as we go. And I'm getting excited. I do really enjoy this part. In between coats of paint, uh, I just went to check out uh, some of the stashes of wood that I have scattered throughout the shop, looking for a little bit of white oak. I really ended up thinking I want to do something fairly modern. So I want a white oak speaker front with a some earth tone painted with an earth tone painted body. So we're going there. That's a very cool piece of uh, warmy maple. But there we go, piece of white oak that was left over from a cabinet project from last year, about a half inch thick and definitely wide enough and long enough to be able to make something out of that. It did cup a little bit over the year and had some chatter marks, so I just ran it through the drum sander just to help flatten it and clean up the face so that it will be ready to go and ready to use for the speaker. After several coats of primer, we're ready for top coat. I'll be using some leftover gallery, uh, Sherwin Williams Gallery cabinet paint in evergreen fog, a nice earthy modern green. And it's a paint that I'm fairly happy with the durability of it. I'm very happy with how it finishes and levels out and lays out and really provides a professional grade cabinet finish, which I think is very fitting for the line of work that I do to give this the best possible finish that I can. So there is the painted, that we painted the speaker box. Um, you can see how the paint came off. I flipped it on its top for that last coat on the front. That's not a problem because I've been working at the shop, coming up with a couple ideas for different, um, different fronts for what we want to do. So my idea is to have this be a somewhat modern color and then a white oak, you know, a white oak front. You know, what's having a moment right now, or at least it was having a moment, I could be behind, is the fluted white oak in a raw finish. When I was trying to get the fluted look, I accidentally hit texture and I got this. I think this is pretty cool, but I think, I don't know if that's gonna be what I'm looking for. But I wanna hide the screws and have just the speakers showing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all the tape off, put this back together, and go back to my garage shop where the CNC is and see if we can figure out what I want that front to look like. I've been, you know, woodworking for several years now and I've been putting videos on YouTube for a slightly less, slightly shorter period of time than that, but it, it's been a little it's been a couple of years now that I've been putting videos out and part of it I'm just really struck by the narcissism that I have to think that anyone would want to listen to me and to watch me do things um, I'm honored I'm blessed I'm thankful to be able to do this and I'm blown away that people actually watch me do that hopefully you know I can continue to keep doing videos like this or keep finding videos that people will enjoy watching this is something new for me building a kit like this I've never 
Now I haven't done a model kit or since like Legos or model airplane when I was a kid. So doing like something like this, this is just absolutely for fun. You know, I'm always building something for other people or for my wife, but this is just for me, which is kind of fun. And bear me, bear with me on this. This is not a piece of white oak. This is actually a piece of maple that I was testing things out. But I got a better video on this piece of maple, which was exactly right. This was my final prototype before moving on to the piece of white oak. And you can just see how the CNC works. I got my uh, holes cut out for the tweeters and the woofers. Got my outline cut out. Got some holes countersunk and drilled to be able to mount to the face of the speaker. And then we're going to use a uh, bowl bit, a, a three-quarter three quarter inch diameter uh, Freud bowl bit just to get that fluting. So I ran the one pass and I didn't feel like it was deep enough. So I ran another pass to get that fluting that really tied in close together. And, you know, I would never, ever have tried to do something like this without a CNC. So that was, has been an incredible uh, benefit to a lot of things that I do is increasing the expanding what I am trying to do what I'm able to do and provide a higher quality product both for myself and for everybody that I do projects for and you know after you know got everything cut out got everything sanded and we're gonna move on to woodworking's most favoritist finish uh, Rubio Monaco because it is it's a fantastic finish to use for small projects uh, it's fantastic finish for, you know, just for ease of finishing. So we're going to use Rubio Monaco in smoke 5%. Um, actually, I had a little sample bottle of it. So we're just going to use that. I'm not going to use the accelerator because I don't need this to dry super quick. It's not going to be a tabletop. I'm also not going to use the accelerator because I just don't feel like dealing with all of the chemicals. Rubio is a safe finish. But that part B, that 2C, that part B, the second part of the two component aspect of Rubio, that's not such a great piece. Not such a great thing. You know, definitely worth using when you need it to be done quick, but not something you want to be in contact with all the time. Back uh, when I was assembling the speaker for the first time, I did make note that the screws for the woofers are not countersunk. They are proud of the enclosure. So I had to come back and route out the backside of this face panel. I was not confident enough to set up a file in the CNC, so we just quick routed it by hand. And it's going to make sure that this face plate sits nice and tight against the front of the speaker. I actually, I really enjoy using this speaker, so I actually had it on while I was working on it. Hopefully I don't get flagged for any of this music, but... It's, it's a nice little speaker, you know, for what it is, you know, a Bluetooth speaker, it's a little bulky, it's a little big, the MDF isn't light, adding the white oak components to it doesn't make it any lighter, but it's it was nice having it in my garage shop, and it was nice throwing it in the car and taking it to my workshop workshop and having uh, that music in both places without having to worry about chords or too much is very nice. What I also realized is that it is heavy and the gallery paint, you know, it's a nice, slick, smooth cabinet finish, which makes the speaker hard to grab. So I had to think of what I can do for a handhold and the cutouts from the woofers actually, I think is a nice touch. They are fluted, they provide nice little finger grips and they work out well. While I was finishing up this part of it, the feet did come in, you know, elbow shot. A lot of elbow shots right here. Uh, the feet came in. These are isolation feet. Uh, I think they're more suited for turntables and larger stereo systems. But I didn't want to use the spike feet because I didn't want to keep damaging every surface that I put this on. I figured that this is a nice compromise. They still have a nice form and function to them. And without you know being completely useless, they're still going to isolate the speaker from the ground if you as long so i can pretend that i'm an audiophile which i am absolutely 100 percent not i just do like listening to nice speakers
And here it is, all finished up. The MK Boom Bluetooth wireless DIY speaker kit. I'm really, I'm really happy with how this came out. I love like the light white oak with this modern green. Um, if I were to do this project again, you know, part of me really wishes I had built a wooden enclosure for the speaker. Um, I know MDF, they say MDF is the material of choice because it's stable. It doesn't have any, it's very uh, flat. So all the sound comes from the speakers without resonance from the box. I am a little concerned about the overall durability of this. If I were, hopefully, you know, not if, but when I build another kit, what I would really like to do is to get maybe some HDF, high density fiberboard, which is uh, stronger, stronger, stronger and more durable than MDF, or to build it out of Baltic birch, something that's gonna be, be more durable, a little more robust than the MDF. But, you know, with the finish, with the Sharon Williams Gallery, uh, cabinet paint and a Rubio Monocote white oak on the front. I am thrilled with how this came out. I am thrilled with the sound quality because to me, I, I truly and honestly, I am not an audiophile, but I do appreciate speakers that work well. You know, it's a very, it's a very full sound that, you know, it's not plastic, it's not tinny, it's, it's very full, it's very robust. I really am enjoying having the music cranked when I'm working, I say that again and again. And yeah, I would love to build more speaker kits. I would love to have a nicer sound system for the TVs and for music, for whatever in the house and to really look into building something like this as part of what I do as a cabinet maker and as a wood as a woodworker. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below do you think, do you think this looks good? That's what I really want to know. I think it looks really cool. I know it's probably not for everybody. I feel like it's a very modern style with a little bit of a, a little bit of a flair, but I believe this is a truly a cabinet maker slash woodworkers twist on a DIY speaker kit. I'm Greg with Spot Tongue Woodworking. Have a great weekend. Thank you.